Dallas Theological Seminary's Chapel Podcast. We were scheduled to have Dr. Waters speak today, but he had some uh, uh, doctor's issues to deal with this week, and he'll be with us next week, God willing. And Dr. Barnes agreed to speak, and as of this morning, he was laid out with a bad back. So it doesn't sound serious, but uh, he's not here today. So I'm going to ask that our, uh, you welcome our president, Dr. Mark Bailey, our chapel speaker. He's our president, professor of Bible exposition. His love and passion for people and the word come together to bring us blessing. Dr. Bailey, would you come, please? Well, somebody has to do it, and uh, I was one of those who uh, was chosen not to speak in chapel, that's a delight, but to uh, get on a boat and uh, spend the last two weeks sailing in the Aegean Sea, uh, <laughs> suffering for the Lord and the cause of Christ and the purpose of Dallas Seminary, along with 150 of our closest friends, as we uh, went around Turkey for uh, the first week and then spent the rest of the time on the journeys of the Apostle Paul, and I just, uh, we just returned on Sunday night. And I, uh, I, I want to take you to a moment out of our trip, if I could. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, first of all, to a passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's a familiar portion, and I want to speak on the exception to the rule, uh, an exception to the rule this morning. Out of the life of Paul and the life of a man who had a, a deep impact in his life, an unknown, relatively unknown man, in verse uh, 26 of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 26, when Paul is uh, extolling the wisdom of the gospel, he says this, For consider your calling, brethren, there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things that are strong. And the base things of the world, the despised that God has chosen, the things that are not, so that he might nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. God loves to take uh, those who can't do it and do it through them, so that God alone gets the glory. It says, not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise were chosen. But once in a while, God did pick someone who had uh, status and someone who had recognition. Uh, I want to take you to Corinth, and this is the first time I had seen this. I'd been at Corinth a number of times, but uh, never on the tours that I was on did they show me this. But I, I, I want to talk about the, that there are a few who are noble and there are a few who are wise that God sometimes chooses that make a big difference in the ministry. I want to show you an inscription. It's called the Erasmus Inscription. The Erasmus Inscription. Uh, you can't really read it. I'll leave that up there for a moment, but let me, let me read it to you. Uh, basically, it means Erastus pro Iad period, S period, P period, Stravit period. That's what you would see if you were there and we could trace those letters. Uh, that's a, an abbreviation for Erastus pro uh, I dilatate sua pecunia stravit. Isn't that a blessing? <laughs> Just uh, say amen, okay? The, the inscription, let me show it to you. Uh, let me put it to you in English so that you can see it. Uh, the Erasmus inscription, it, it's, it reads like this in that pavement. This is how it uh, is spelled out without the abbreviations, and this is the translation. Erastus for return of his uh, idolship, laid this pavement at his own expense. Now, you say, what in the world is that all about? Iodile is, uh, from the Latin, adilus, means temple or building, and it was an official office of the Roman Republic. It was based in Rome, and the Iodiles were responsible for maintenance of public buildings and the regulation of public festivals. They had the powers to enforce public order. Uh, half of them were from the plebeians, and the other half were from the uh, patricians. And uh, the office was generally held by young men intending to follow uh, a, a course of honor to high political office. Traditionally, after 
uh, they had uh, gone through about this inscription is that this particular Erastus, uh, unlike many politicians, fulfilled his promise when he was running for the office or being elected to the office because in gratitude for those who had helped appoint him to that office, he, of his own expense, lays a pavement in recognition of those who had helped him get to that position. I thought about this morning and I thought about this statement. It was from Dr. Campbell that uh, Dr. Swindoll, who followed him, and I heard a statement that all of us are like turtles on fence posts. If you ever find a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there on its own. Somebody put it there. And now there's a book that's been written by that title. I, uh, I want you to know, and I think all of us in here would admit, that there have been some great turtle lifters in our lives. People who have come along, and because of their help, we get to do what we get to do, just like those that helped Erastus into public office there in Corinth. Uh, those of us in ministry would not be in ministry if somebody hadn't come along and encouraged us that maybe you have gifts for ministry and we'd like to be a part of this, or it might have been a parental prophetic statement that one day God's going to use you greatly. Uh, it may have been just a partner in ministry who came alongside a friend who saw in you the potential to be used by God. All of us have turtle lifters in our life. Ministries have turtle lifters. Now, we're not exactly sure, but there was an Erastus that's mentioned by Paul who had a position of public duty in Corinth. And I want to take these passages in reverse order. Look with me at 2 Timothy 4. I'm just going to pearl string three passages together. But at the end of his life, Paul is uh, writing his swan song. He's been in prison. He's been out, probably now in prison, waiting ultimately for his death. As he writes his swan song in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 19, he, he writes back to Timothy and he says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila. And we know about them from the book of Acts. In the household of Anesiphorus, Erastus remained where? At Corinth. Hmm. But Trophimus, I left sick at Miletus. Make every effort to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, as also Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Erastus, a guy by the name of Erastus was left at Corinth. Uh, on his third missionary journey, turn back to Acts chapter 19, verse 22. We're going in sort of a chronologically reverse order. But chapter 19, Paul is, uh, had his uh, second missionary journey in which he was at Corinth. And uh, it's in his third missionary journey that he's making the rounds. And in chapter 19, in verse 21, it says this, now, after these things were finished, which I love verse 20, so the, the word of the Lord was growing mightily and prevailing. There's the ministry. Now, after these things were finished, Paul purposed in the spirit to go to Jerusalem after he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, saying, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and, guess who? Erastus. A guy by the name of Erastus. He himself, Paul, stayed in Asia for a while. On the first missionary journey, as a result of the first missionary journey, Paul writes one book, probably the book of Galatians. On the second missionary journey, he probably writes first and second Thessalonians, and on the third missionary journey, he writes Romans and first and second Corinthians, back to those churches where he had been and to Rome where he had not yet been. Now turn over with me to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Paul is sending greetings again. And in Romans 16 verse 23, we have a fascinating little statement. Gaius, host to be into the whole church, which is at Corinth. Okay, you can read back in the book of Acts. The whole church greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer greets you. Oikonomos, oikonomia is where we get the word stewardship, administration, or the older English word dispensation. But one who held office in an official capacity was often called the oikonomos, the steward. And Erastus that sends greetings 
to the church at Rome, along with Paul, in this book that was penned uh, technically by Tertius on behalf of Paul, Erastus sends his greetings, and he's called the uh, oikonomos of the city, the steward of the city. There is some discussion because the idealist is not the, exactly the equivalent of oikonomos, and uh, if they are the same person, then uh, he was an idealist either before or after Paul wrote his letter and didn't hold the exact same office as the oikonomos of the city. It may be two words for a similar kind of a post. But there is a reason to believe this may be the same Erastus. If it is, and even if it's not, the principle is still the same. Well, those of us who are in ministry are not here because of our great giftedness. We're not in ministry because of our great merit or worth. God tells us that we're in ministry because of grace and because there were some people that came alongside of us to become turtle lifters to us in the ministry. Dr. Campbell has been that to me. He has been an encouraging turtle lifter in my life. Couldn't have asked for more prayer and support in my role, whether a faculty member, an administrator, or president, than he has uh, given me. And for that, Dr. Campbell, I'm deeply, deeply grateful. There are not many mighty, not many noble, but there are exceptions. When God wraps people around your life and in ministry of any size, of any shape, of any significance, there are people whom God has used, people of means and people of influence, who have become turtle lifters to us. And in the 85 years of history of Dallas Seminary, every single one of us who have held our role have stories of God wrapping people around our lives who may have been public officials, who may have been prominent in their professions, who may have been blessed in their business, who may have been influential in their contacts. They've come alongside and made the ministry more than it would have been. General principle is true, not many, but there are few, like Erastus, the city treasurer without question, who is a companion of the Apostle Paul who traveled with him maybe on relief time from being the steward of the city, but who was a significant part of the missionary journeys and the turtle lifting in the life of the Apostle Paul. Be a turtle lifter and be grateful for those who are in your life. There aren't many, but there are some in public office, in high-profile positions, who when they give their heart and life to Christ become incredibly valuable to the ministry. We don't covet and court them just for their money. We ask them to uh, dream with us about a vision of reaching the world for Christ. And you're here today and I'm here today. This building is here today because there have been those kinds of people in the ministry of Dallas Seminary for those 85 years. Appreciate that heritage. Honor my beloved friend and mentor and be grateful for the turtle lifters who will be and are in your life already. Never get over it. We're here by grace. Father, whether this is the Erastus of Paul's life or another Erastus in the city, there was an Erastus in public life who became significant to the ministry of the gospel. Thank you for those in our churches and in our community and our world who have been able to balance their public life and loyalty to a community with their deep commitment and abiding loyalty to your word. May their tribe increase and may we always be grateful that God uses them in all of our lives. Thank you for what you're doing in our school, in our student body, in our faculty, in our staff. We look forward to uh, the completion of our summer term and the beginning of an 86th year. 
And we ask that you would be glorified more in our future than in our past. For your sake, not ours. For your glory and yet our good. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.